Um, so usually we start with a status update on where we are with GMT. I guess the highlights are we released GMT 6.2.0 um, a couple of weeks ago or a week ago, June 5th. And that, uh, that's good. That took a long time to get to that point uh, for all kinds of reasons, uh, but we finally got it out. So that's great. Uh, we want 6.3 to not take that long, I think. Um, discussed may and I a little bit about when do you want to aim for 6.3 it's kind of early to really pin it down but we, we try to avoid you know too close to AGU that was the traditional decision not too close to AGU in case we break something so mid-fall is usually what we're aiming for um so sometime in October maybe again it's a little bit too early to say what exactly 6.3 going to be about there's been um, many features that were sort of VIP uh, branches that was waiting for 6.2 to be released. I, I've forgotten all of them, but I, I know recently added a clipping using uh, the digital charge of the world polygons uh, is now available. <clears throat> Adding shade to subplot tags. Uh, we got transparency working. We have the color bars. Um, in new features such as uh, aligning the labels across many plots, if you have different plots stacked vertically and the different Y ranges. Uh, the Y labels would not line up normally, right? Because they're all based on the width of the Y annotation. But this way you could set it to be a certain distance from the axis and then they nicely lined up for those kinds of plots. Um, you can now mix geographic and Cartesian axis more simply. This is a long standing issue <laughs> where it was very difficult to annotate longitudes on the Y axis and so on. So that, uh, that's been fixed. And we just merged in yesterday the, this branch um, that uh, Christoph, which I wish was here, uh, pushed, which is this uh, new system for usage messages in the terminal that is based on the width of the terminal and it automatically wraps around. So uh, we, we have continuation of lines and a little bit better layout and using a little bit fancier graphics with bullets and, and the break symbols and continuation symbols. Uh, and that needs to be implemented across all the modules we've done three so far, plus all the common options. So we're gonna need help from people who have nothing better to do than to, to do some chore in the C library of you know rewriting some of the usage messages. So Megan op uh, opened the issue yesterday. That sort of explains what how you do that. You know, what are, what are the arguments to the function, the new GMT usage function, how do you use it? And of course there's the examples of base map and plots. Um, that shows how, how it's done. So yeah, there's a tried issue. to write the steps without having ever done it. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. But I saw the issues there, and there's a bunch of checkboxes for all the modules. The idea is that you know we, we pick a module to work on, and then we then uh, so we don't step on each other's toes doing this. So this is a good, sort of good first uh, first issue for folks who haven't done anything in this C or want to help and not sure what to do. It's sort of low level fruit kind of thing. It's just a lot of them, you know. So I, I will, I am making will tick away at those over time, uh, but it's 150, so, you know. But many of them are very short, uh, you know. If you exclude, you know, behemoths like PSXY and so on, a lot of the GMT modules only have a handful of non-common options, right? And those are the only ones that uh, needs to be dealt with this way because the common options have been solved already. So, you know, for those who want to start, just pick a very simple module and just see what it's like to make a few changes. It, it should not be very hard. Um, Megan, do you want to add to the status update? Do you have any numbers on the number of <laughs> number of commits and things like that, or is that comes later? I forgot to put it in the agenda ahead of time. It usually takes GitHub a couple of seconds to uh, compute those statistics. So if you okay. come back to me in a, in a minute or two, I can report that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we can add it later, actually. It's, it's, it's just uh, it's nice to see that there are actually progress and we'll be doing stuff. So that's sort of the status on where we are right now. Um, there is no clear new feature we're working on for 6.3, I guess. We haven't defined what should 6.3 be other than the release in the fall, you know, not keep it going too long. Uh, but of course, there's bug bug fixes will happen. There's a lot of issues outstanding, and that's always going to go on. But since there's you know there's never-ending bugs, we just have to sort of cut it off at some point. 
uh, and, and issue a new release like we did for 6.2. All right, so I'll stop there. If anyone has comments about the development status. Well, I've been looking, um, uh, well, been looking for one or two days. Um, the three plots, the three plots on the trinary plots. Yes, right. Yeah, I sent you a mail. I think we need those slanted ticks because I don't know how people can, uh, if we ask, I, I don't know if you have used uh, trinary plots, but if you ask how to read the axis, I would bet that yeah. The, yeah, yeah. with vertical ticks, it, it's just random. You don't know what to do. E either you know how it is done, and uh, and then I learned that GMT's A axis is the horizontal, and if you go to the Wikipedia, the A axis is the left axis, left axis so if you compare the plots they are not equal but okay. because of that that i also send you the, the image that i the matlab program produced yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. a bit confused because it's is a uh, swap the horizontal axis but uh without those uh, slanted peaks uh well uh, the others i don't know if you are if you know what i'm talking about but uh, yeah, I, I did like it. you have three <laughs> axes and if you are in the point you don't know What's the yeah. coordinates of that point? And yeah, there, yeah, is, yeah. Uh, there is a system that um, slants the ticks um, along the line that defines the axis, so you immediately uh, realize how you can read sure. that. Right, 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 right. Because on the on, on with vertical, uh, I also try to slant the text, the annotations. But for example, I can do it on the horizontal axis. On the left axis, it goes beyond the plus minus ninety, yeah. and it does not let yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. By the way, yeah. why why not? Why is yeah. it limiting the the rotation that we do to the end? We should not limit it. If you do crazy things, okay, just yeah. let, let users do. So. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I got your email obviously, and I I've, the only thing I've done there yet was to fix the external yes uh, bug stuff. So that was fixed, and now I'm going to do the other look at the other things too. The uh, the way the base map for ternary plots are done is supposed to use base ps base map basically and and rotate things so i have to see and this should be but we have no current scheme for slanting ticks right we have slanted no, 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 no they are on they are automatic on uh, certain project projections but we have no way to yeah, yeah. Uh, right we can't specify yeah exactly so you know that's i uh, may have to implement that that you know some setting that is only used for ternary or you know the slant angle is non-zero or something else. It is straight for Cartesian. You no, know, so I, I can see that being not too hard to do. I think when you when you slant the the, the annotation, why not just let slant the the, the ticks as well if if uh, if that is wish it. Yeah, I can look at that too. That so cool. yeah. then you can also let slant the, the, the. It would be another option, either slant or not slant the tick. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. That's uh, we have the slant the ticks for that to be clear, and I'll look at the other ABC stuff. You know, compare. That was uh, uh, I must say I haven't have I haven't had a need to make a lot of ternary plots myself. <laughs> no, me neither, me neither. But uh, I yeah. wanted to do that for some time. There was that question and other things. So I implemented that in Julia, so now I can do contours, which is revealing some strange things with the. Uh, with the PS contour, the annotations of the contours, it kind of, I don't know why it decides sometimes to do what it does. But I, well, yeah, okay. it's ready. It's not ready because the terrible minus B, because having a minus B for uh, ternary options is, uh, is odd. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's three. I mean, uh, yeah. having an expanded one, I can do it, but uh, in a, yeah. Concentrated, cryptic, yeah, all the way. All right, I, mean, I think you know ternary. That those things are bugs in my mind. In my mind, right? I mean, they're bugs. They're different kinds of bugs. The annotation. It's you know, it's a limitation that we can label as a bug. And we'll fix it. Uh, I think that's important. And uh, I saw that I started putting in things for contouring in PS ternary as well. There's some hidden. Uh, not options, but it was never implemented. The idea was to have it be able to counter those numbers. So <clears throat> what I did, what I did is when uh, you can contour with either with PS contour or yeah. if 
we also use and decide to have an image under the hood. It calculates the grid with the surface, then it the, yeah, the sure. GRD image, and on top of that, you can do a GRD contour. So it, it's either a GRD contour or a PS contour. Yeah. On, on, yeah. On the yeah, I don't know. For PS Ternary, the input is typically points, right? And yes, but I've seen them. Yeah. I've seen, there are many, many, I've seen many, several that they have images. So somehow they also have to grade it. And uh, but they have yeah. they have images. They are even uh, 3D GRD view of I don't know what's oh, sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, hmm. okay. We'll take it one step at a time. There, you know, it, it may be just too complicated to have one tool try to do all these things, right? It's you know, it's plotting points and it's it's doing contours and it's doing images, right? That's we have separate module for that in. Geographic, geographic and Cartesian, right? So ternary is a little weird. It was just a, an add-on. So uh, I, I worry about making that tool do everything. It's going to have too many options and you know make it very complicated. But it, it should at least do the basic correct. So you got to fix the annotation axis, I think. Paul, I can give a quick summary of these statistics if you want. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, so uh, there were many more merged PRs this month and the month preceding, uh, likely because we had all those that backlog of features that, that mostly Paul had implemented. So yes. from May 17th to uh, June 17th, there were 81 merged PRs, 31 closed issues, 11 new issues uh, with 30, or sorry, with seven off authors changing 288 files with over 3,500 additions and on, over, 2000 deletions. Mm -hmm. And I suspect that a large part of that was the uh, um, synopsis message changes, which were many files. Uh, currently, we have 201 open issues and eight, 18 PRs. Thanks. That's great. Yes. And we had a lot of new people helping out a little bit. So this is good. Uh, getting more people involved there. Um, <clears throat> let's see here on the agenda. So, um, so right now, since we just released 6.2, there's nothing final to talk about 6.3 yet, but if you have any, I guess, wish lists for what 6.3 should include, it's good to get those out soon and you know, put feature requests so we can aim for implementing things like that. Otherwise, it's sort of aiming to be a service release. Yeah, Dangda. I, uh, I just opened a PR, uh, I mean, I opened an issue yesterday about the histogram. Um, I we will paste the link uh, in the chat. So um, I find that the histogram may produce a wrong plot for between GMD 6.1 and 6.2. Yeah, I believe it's, this way, is, I think it's a bug and it's very criti critical because um, uh, you, you can say that it, it gave yeah. me the wrong results. Yes. Yeah. It's pretty bad. Um. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, I, I saw your thing coming yesterday. Dong Dong, I haven't had time to look at that yet. Uh, I'm trying to understand what, what's happening there. It looks very strange, of course. Um, there's no general similarities, so it's it's not the wrapping all around, but it's like every other <laughs> bin is yeah. missing. Is it exactly every other? Yeah, it almost looks like every other bin is just... No, 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 oh, no, that's, no. Not true. no that's not no. true. There's different at the ends there. Okay. I'm sure it's a stupid thing that we can fix pretty quickly, but that, that brings up the question of 6.2.1, right? Is that what you're sort of leaning towards? If it's critical? Yeah, I think it's wait. critical yeah. because uh, they may, uh, so if I look at the wrong results, I may have a different explanation for the for my results. So it's, it's not like uh, plotting bugs. Yeah. 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 And we can add that to a couple other critical bugs that was found, like GRD blend. And uh, there was one more, I think that Joachim pointed out. What was that again? There was one more thing that was a kind of bad bug. And anyway, it was a couple, that's a couple that I, that, was, that I considered maybe candidates for doing 6.2.1, right? And this one adds to that. So, okay. Yeah, so we should put and that maybe, in. Yeah. And maybe I still have to check, but maybe we did not update the IGRF 
uh, to see. Oh yeah, right. We are, we are we are already in twenty one, and I'm not sure. And especially last time was not me who, who updated. Was uh, don't know, not, not right now, but was someone else possibly the PR for that? Five Might years ago. Yeah. Hmm? Five years ago, you mean? No, 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 no. No. Uh, one or two years ago. Mike, Mike, Mike. No, it was not. I don't don't think it was. All right. Do you want to look at those coefficients and see what you can find? Yeah, I have, I have to see if the sort of the one who did that stuff. One oh. of the one of these days in the morning or something like that. I said, or or because I was look or because I was looking at geographically. No, I was looking at geographically, and uh, he has uh, also uh, he has the coefficients there. So that's okay. when pop up in my mind. Oh, did we update it? Or maybe you have updated the IGRF, but not the DGRF for 2015 or something like that. So we might have to update, have to look yeah. at the update. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's been a long time since I remember me doing anything with those files. So that's that's good. Okay. All right. So I will look at uh, the histogram bug after, later today. <laughs> it can't be right after the meeting. I have another meeting right after this meeting. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, that uh, looks bad. Um, let's see. So what's coming up on the horizon now, because it's the UNAVCO workshop. And uh, <clears throat> we need to tell UNAVCO how we're going to do things. Uh, it's still in some time from now. It's in July. But we're going to start soon having the, you know, the very first meeting where we meet with all the students. And then we used to have a, <clears throat> a cleanup session for install problems, if any. Uh, and last year, I would say that worked pretty well. We had very few people who had trouble installing, like just a tiny handful, right? Um, versus in the old days when we had a physical meeting and we spent lots of time helping people with their laptops installing things. So uh, just just having this this format online and requiring things to be done, and you know we don't have time to do any installs when we run the workshop, it seems to help a lot. So we need um, folks to help. I, I think we have, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I think myself, Megan, Joachim, Dong Dong, and Leo has said they will be willing to help with lecturing. Uh, we haven't picked down exactly who's doing what. We want to switch around. I know Joachim is tired of points and lines. Uh, but we didn't make a decision, I think. Of, I, I know Leo offered to swap or something. <laughs> you do images and grids. And then we had the issue of having a little demo session of the uh, wrappers, right. which, which can't be then the main thing of this, this workshop, but it could be a, something to show off a little bit. So there's, there's that. Uh, and then Federico is offered to help uh, in, the, in the breakout rooms, you know, help people with their scripts. Um, we probably need three more people. I think we had like four people last year plus the presenters, and that seemed to be okay dealing with Slack and uh, and GitHub. Um, so we still need to beat the bushes a little bit for for helpers. You know, we can always run up a couple of students probably at the last minute. It's, it's pretty low level, you know, th these are folks who are struggling with basic GMT scripts and we just need someone to help them point out problems. <clears throat> so it's, it's pretty easy actually. And it's with the breakout rooms, there's not, you know, too many people to, to keep an eye on. Um, the last time we had the meeting, we talked about possibly using GatherTown instead of Zoom breakouts for running the workshop. And uh, I guess it's getting down to uh, decision time on that, Megan, what to do. And since Leo was the one who suggested that, but he couldn't come, it's sort of hard to really have a good discussion on what to do there. Yeah, Luigi had made a, a, a draft um, gather town room uh, but I presume the timing is bad for him uh, in Oceana. So uh, I, I don't know the status of that either. So it's a, I agree, it's difficult to have a, a good discussion without Leo and Luigi. Yeah, 
Yeah. So I guess since we have to tell you now because something pretty soon, <clears throat> I guess the default is to do the same as we did last year, unless you know something changes very very soon. I think I don't think we can just make announcements of switching a platform without actually having played with it a little bit. What do you think? So. All right, oh, we'll look into that a little bit further, I guess, but um, we do need to tell Inavco. Well, we can stall a little bit. They don't really need to know right away, I think. I mean, what, Megan, do you remember why they need to know something right away? They just need to know dates and uh, sort of the big picture. So the first, I think the, the first introduction, which is mostly, uh, mostly me was last time, talking about what the workshop will be like, right? That, that, that was just a lecture in a sense. That's almost like a webinar. Yeah, I actually, I had a question about that. So there's two, right? And yeah. we coordinated it. So it's, it's at least um, practical, if not easy for you to get up. I think it's at like 7 a.m. or something and yeah. 9 p.m. or something Hawaii time. Um, so <laughs> what, what help do you want for those? Um, I, I think for most other people on this call, it's only practical for us to be at one of the two based on our time zones. Yeah, exactly. So, so I did them both last year because it was fine. You know, it's the same day. It wasn't too bad. I don't mind giving those. Uh, it was all right. Uh, and I think from last year, it wasn't like, it was pretty much me just talking about stuff. That's what I remember. And it wasn't too much for anyone else to do anything. Do I remember that incorrectly, Joachim, or? No, did you it was, yeah, yeah, it was you talking. Yeah. yeah you, did <laughs> you did it twice, I don't remember, or exactly yeah. the same or very similar. Yeah, same slides. I mean, right. right now, why, why was it? Because it was for the SAR and the GMT, or I don't know, why, why was it repeated? Well, it was repeated the, because we had people all around the planet. So there was yeah, time zone. Two time, zone. Two times, time zone. Yeah. yeah, that was all because we had, you know, it was really almost 24 hour coverage. <laughs> so we did it that way. And I mean, I, but that's when you would record the first one and, uh, okay, and the, the other one. The, the yeah. Late. Yeah. No, no, no point. And I don't, I, I really do not like to say the same thing twice very close. Right, right. <laughs> One and the other. Okay, if it's two or three days after, okay, but it's in the same day. After, I'm gonna say it again. I I, I have that uh, parrot um, <laughs> feeling that I don't like. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's like uh, you know trying to do the same thing. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you could do that. You could just do one and record it, and then I, I guess that just felt um, it was better to be live in case there was some questions back. And it wouldn't be, you know, there would be a half of them will not be able to respond. It is something really understandable for everybody that, okay, um, there is one that is alive and the other one, okay, my luck or bad luck to be on the other side of the world uh, regarding that. And I think it's something that people will accept very, very well. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's not to, the, to play the, the, the thing. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll think about that if it's worth staying up and doing two or only have one and record it, I guess. I'll look at my notes from last year. Uh, if it's just me preaching, preaching, then maybe it's okay to just record it. Um, and then we had about a week after, I think, or a week before the workshop, we had a optional um, installation session. For those who, okay, so before then we have a homework, right? We sent the homework out or they basically have to make sure their GMT is working so they can make this plot and this movie, right? And if they did that, then we have, we said they had a working GMT installation and there was a handful of people who had trouble of some sort and they, they came to the cleanup session, I guess, and got some help. So I guess that worked in that sense. There was very few people who needed special help. And I think they all got it to work by the end of that session. 
Uh, so I guess we'll still do that. I mean, advertise we will do it. Um, and, and that's definitely not a taped thing because that depends on who's coming and what their problems are. So I think those those two are sort of, we'll just do a copy paste from last year to some extent. Um, but what we need now is to identify who's, who's um, presenting what during the workshop, right? So, so we have that clear. And I guess some of the things are set already. I guess Dong Dong's gonna do the seismic stuff, right? So that's that's fine. And you can, you can make any adjustments you wanna do from last year, but that's basically, you're in charge of that. I should double check with Eric about um, GPS. Uh, since this is a geodesy workshop, <laughs> it'd be good to have him uh, involved. I, I think, because he's gonna do in the GMTSR, but I, I don't remember if we asked him specifically. And uh, it's a joke. And what do you want to do? Put it that way. Oh, what about Julia? <laughs> I, I, I can do that. Those lines again. I know, but did you 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 rather do something else, right? I mean, I'm happy to trade with you. So what did I do? I did uh, sort of basic stuff, and I did animation, I guess. No, but you do the animations. I have not studied the animations for. I did that only once when I wrote the okay. the Julia model that do some animations and then I forgot about that. But okay, if you did the line animation, of... the animation yeah. now that it's Federico that has a, 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 a pro, yeah exactly and yeah. a lot of time a lot of time reading the docs. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, no, that's Federico has found a lot of problems and things we need to improve on, including the speed issue. So that's good. That may not happen before July though, but yeah, it'll be good to have Federico helping with uh, student projects doing animations because that's- Yes, I have to, to change my exactly. things and do different lines, I don't know. Yeah, oh, you know, make it fun for you, right? You know, plot lines and symbols and stuff, but do it fun for you somehow, whatever you want to do there. <laughs> so you don't repeat yourself, right? <laughs> no, yeah, don't repeat, yeah. But that is the laziness you take, it, let it to the last minute and then, okay, it's done. I'm gonna do it again. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll double check with uh, Leo. I had a, a separate Zoom with him last week and he couldn't come today because you know he has a kid that keeps him up at night and then he had a lot of work to do. So he was uh, pretty tired. Uh, but I think he said he was gonna come because, uh, and he's doing the- last, last time apparently he had the wrong time for the meeting. Yeah, for the, yes. The <laughs> for the party, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I missed the Pi GMT meeting. That, and this one he he knew about, but it was time. It's pretty late for him, I guess. Nine ish. No, time is for me. It's eight yeah. o'clock. Yeah, yeah, but and you have a little baby. <laughs> no, no, that's the difference. It's still daylight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. So I'll I'll just touch base with Leo to make sure he's on board for the grid stuff, and then I guess the default is that Joachim doing the lines and points in some fashion, and then we have the material. Right, and then, then you are each responsible for updating your slides and whatever little tests and uh, demos and whatever you want to do there. Um, and then we have a plan, I think. What do you think, Megan? Is that going to work? Sounds good. Oh. And if um, for some reason anyone can't make it at the last minute, I could step in. Otherwise, I'll plan to just help with students. With right, yeah. Time. We haven't given Megan a, a big role. She should be doing all these things. She's being paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, well, we'll see. Uh, in, in some ways, uh, teaching is can be the funner part, right? So maybe the yeah. person who's being paid should be just helping. Yeah, well, you and I can talk, because you know, by looking at the schedule from last year, I had several things. Yeah, I, I have a, some sort of intro, basic shell junk, bash thing, I think. And then I have like your first GMT plot, very basic stuff. I think there's some separate sessions and, yeah, and then, the, and then, the and then animation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the sections we haven't talked about are welcome, which I think you would definitely do. Uh, Unix yeah. and bash for yeah. 25 minutes, GMT basics for 80 minutes, assuming that the schedule will be the same. And then and animations and final projects. Uh, though I don't think we really set what the final project projects are going yeah. to be this year. No, let's let's remember that thought, hold that thought. So just first, 
you and I can have a little chat about, you know, if, if you want to do the bash thing or you want to do the intro uh, basic plot or something like that. That's, you know, we can we can play off that. That's easy. I'll probably, I'll still do the animation, I guess. Uh, Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. And then um, the final project. Okay, so the students this year, they have registered, or at least some have, I don't know exactly how many, have registered for a one credit class, right, through University of Montana or something. And so to get that credit, they have to finish the final project. And, and last year, the way we did the final project, since they're kind of, you know, whatever, uh, they had to submit it on Slack, I think. Yeah. The final plot, something like that. And then that, that was the evidence that they finished their project. Yeah. And that worked okay. I mean, that was, you know, it was a yes or no kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, I'm happy with that. We're kind of unlike the GMT SAR group, which where they come with their own data set maybe and they want to work on a final project. Here is, you know, GMT newbies trying to make a GRD image plot or something simple. So we don't really need to present it. You know, it's kind of be lame. You can have 80 people presenting GRD image plots. It's going to take forever, <laughs> you know, talk about it. I chose this color bar and here are the degree symbols. You know, there's not much you can see about a basic GMT plot. So I think just having them submit their final plots and that's, we accept that. That's, that's probably how we're going to run it this year too. Is that okay with everybody? I mean, it seems like there's not much to grade or anything, you know, it's just you do it or you don't do it kind of thing. Okay, so we'll sort of do it that way. I think in general, last year worked pretty well. I think that was the consensus afterwards that, you know, we, students got help. Or we didn't feel overworked or, you know, spread out too thin and it's, it, people were happy with it in general. So I, I think that's an okay recipe to follow this year too. All right, anything else about the workshop? Are we okay with that? Okay. Um, GMT usage message revision. I, I just already talked about that a little bit. Is there anything else to add there, Megan? We're just gonna... No, I think you covered it really well. If anyone's interested in helping out, uh, just um, put your name next to the module that you'll be working on or modules if you wanna do it, all, oops, like claim a bunch at once. Uh, and if you don't have, I think everyone on this call has edit access, but if I'm wrong, then just post a comment not, with the list yeah. of modules you want to do and we'll put your name next to them. Yeah. And if you want to do this, just pick the simplest module you can think of with the fewest options, just to see what it looks like. It, it really is changing a GMT message call to a GMT usage call that takes one argument. And then just be a little bit careful which argument you pass so it lines up. That's really it for most of them. Yeah, you don't have to commit to doing multiple modules. I didn't mean to imply that. So as, as little or as much as you want to do would be helpful. Yeah, and it just means the last 150 for the rest of us, right? So it's okay. All right, that's good. Oh, okay, the last one is sort of a recent thing. Uh, if you paid attention to GitHub, you've seen that uh, Charles Kearney, who is a geodesist and has written a lot of code related to lipsoidal stuff in for Proj, and he he reminded us <laughs> that we had said we would do proj in GMT some time ago. And because Joachim knows this, this goes way back that we have proposed even to NSF that we would rip out basically GMT proj.c and replace it with calls to proj4 for proj. And, and that's that's still something we want to do, I think. I mean, it would be nothing better for GMT to not have to worry about its own map projections, right? When there is a robust, stable proj library that does all that stuff. It's just that GMT and proj evolved at the same time at different branches. So for us to change now, it's, it, it's a certain amount of work involved, right? So the way I see it is there's two things. He, he posted um, two issues. One was sort of, actually two, two and a half. One was sort of specifically, if we wanted to call this ellipsoidal version of something, we could do that in proj, you know, just have a, a shell of a C function that we currently have and then call the proj function. So you have this, you don't change the code in GMT other than just calling the proj from that dummy function. That's something we can look at. The bigger picture is, you know, replacing GMT proj with proj and the long last two X, Y stuff. That's a big job. So what do you think, Joachim? Should we, what should we do here? I, I kind of want to, 
move in this direction or doing something and not just punting for years after years, but it's a big job. Before this last change, last, not last, I have been doing changes for a long time. I have not, well, because I don't need to do those uh, map co coordinate uh, conversions at the level of the currency that they want. People are discussing mm -hmm. centimeters with the grids and all yeah, that. Yeah. And the right. pipe, I mean, they, they came up with a pipe, a pipe system where you do not go from UTM to Mercator, Mercator through uh, geographics, you go directly when that transformation exists, and you can do several. Then you have you even have uh, plus proj equal pipe. So they change add a lot of things. I think I tried once and it did not work with with what we have because the thing before we have it all. It's the yeah. is the thing is uh, uh, when I did it, I needed. When I did it, and still now, because of the frames of the images, I need yeah. to the the conversion from the Proj conversion to the GMT. So yeah. uh, I have the conversion, the parameters, and the name of the projection. All of that there is a mapping between the GMT and the, so that is still there, and that yeah. thing we drop it. But so we don't now do not. I I, I think we cannot do those pipe. Chain, chaining the, those projections. And we still have the mapping from the Proj to the GMT names because they are needed to do the frames yeah. uh, of images. But otherwise, what we have, it's already Proj. Yeah, okay. Through Gadal, yeah. Through Gadal, we don't need it, we don't need it to live through. Uh, I think we should keep it through Gadal. Otherwise, it's a lot more work. Things yeah. that all, he brought one of them at least is things that he has from the geographic leap that they are in Proj. That's the thing with the area, the area of ge uh, geodesic polygons. Right. The other thing with the Vicente, because they say the Vicente code does not converge in a certain uh, situation. That's why it's not good. But for what I understood, it's right. as, as is, but uh, there is one particular, he's mat a mathematician, I think. So yeah. there is. Certain cases that the Vincenti uh, routine might not converge, and his 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 function it does the, the converge. That is not it's it, it is in 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 Proj, but not all of it because I also I wanted to send you later, but I also have it's very easy. I did the loxodromes in geodesic. I found a, a PDF from an Australian guy because Charles also did it in geographic leap, but that part is not in Proj. Not all of the geographic leap functions are in Proj. Okay. They are the, the geo to do the, the geodesic uh, project. The geodesic project, I have it, it's, it's in, in, uh, in Proj because he, he, he added these functions from the geographic leap. But he also has functions for doing loxodromics, which are not in, in Proj. So I, I, they, but actually, they are simple. I, I found the PDF, a nice PDF. And I have the equations I programmed it that in Julia and it works with. Uh, but they have different things. He, he was mentioning things that he has in geographically that you can access because they are in Proj, like the area of a polygon, a geodetic polygon, yeah. or all the machinery to do the projections. That machinery to do the projections, we have it. In yeah, play. I took it out. Yeah. Right. We don't use right. it. We don't use it much. And there are several issues that need to be. Relearn why it's still work is half done, and I remember that a part of it is because I need to to pass part of the work to do GMT to do the to be able to do the frames of the maps and yeah. things like that. But otherwise, what we have works. I think like it does not well continuing it is work of course, but it's not like coming back to the beginning because otherwise right. you need to feed. The data. So feeding data to that, it means you have to call a function for every point. Something that I, I, it gets me crazy. I, I don't understand why people that talk about efficient code calls a function for every point. So it means if you have a million points, which is nothing, you do a lot, do at least a million function calls. They might be cheap, but if you multiply them by millions, 
I really have troubles to understand how they can still say this shit. So there's all of that machinery that, for example, I had to learn and forget after a bit to do the the buffers. We have the buffer because the buffer, I think I used, yes, I used Proj, not Proj, sorry, uh, Geos, Geos directly. Yes, yeah. That pain, you have to, well, that pain of communicating the data between yeah. the, and the other libraries, it's it's more probably at least as painful as, in, as calling the function. So it's just calling the function, yes, when it knows what it's going to work on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of translations of data formats between things. It's, it's not even formats you are passing doubles, uh, pointers with doubles, but uh, the way they add it, they, they really want... Proj, no, Geos was like that, and even the, some bridges that are in the DAO, you have to call a function for each point. It's, yeah. it's, right, so you don't have any arrays. So on the other side, on the loop of all of your points and call a function to pass your data to the other side, but probably doing a copy, uh, yeah but we do the same though i mean when we call convert lawn lat to x y for any projection it is a point by point basis somewhere it's a single function yes, that does, does yes that. It, it, it is also that which something it's yeah. i have i try to find to do uh, some vectorized thing but you yeah. pass a pointer and the data is directly on the other side they call a yeah. that feels a structure of a data some data structure on the other side that's the one that's going to be used and to get the data back you have to do the opposite so you don't really just pass a pointer of doubles you call okay. functions that feel structures with certain yeah. well stretches of course and it's more it's, uh, it's more well nothing very complicated but it's uh boring and uh the very error prone. So maybe maybe it's a lot of debugging to see if you are doing it right. right. Yeah. Hey, so maybe you and I can have a little side chat and look at you know the issue of the plots that look slightly different because of the there's something we didn't finish. We noticed this years ago when you first did it that if we plot a map in GMT using the Gedal functions or let's say Mercator, the plots aren't quite the same or some of the projections. And we never solve that problem no but, never i know it's what we should, we should re revisit it i think uh, it's almost uh, probably very similar almost the same if they are cylindrical but all, all yeah. the other all all the others yeah. are, are not even similar i mean the the map can be the the image or the contour can be but not yeah. the frame is not possible yeah so maybe can you help me by creating an issue that shows an example of that and then I can try to debug it to see why, because I think that it could, if we can solve that problem, then we suddenly have access to a lot of projections for one thing. I, think if, uh, I have an idea. Of, I have an idea of having tried that the bone projection, that one, that one that looks like a heart. Heart, that's, yeah. That's one of those that does not work if yeah. you do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. To be continued, I think it's. Uh, it's tricky, but but the other things that arise are, are are more yeah uh, yeah yeah bug bugs issues there and you want to just, I looked at some of those references you know of course we we're going to respond to bug fixes uh, have to well, there is one thing I have I want to ask him because that okay. so wrong. And I found when I tried not because I was too clever to look at the equations, although later I found why is not is a uh, is undefined or, or, or along the equator because you get an, uh, a zero divided by zero. And so uh, and then I, I, I check it while well, I just added uh, some small amount to move it away. Oh, to yeah. I don't get the same numbers as, as it does. So he has to do something else. But really, C++ this code is incomprehensible. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to go there. I, I, I really, that's something I don't want to have anything to do with having to read those kind of codes. Really horrible. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I'm, I don't know C either, so don't want to go there. Um, okay, so hmm, I'll think about the prod stuff, and I think I'll, I will talk to you about trying to solve that problem of the the frames not lining up. That would be 
helpful. Yeah, because you have functions to do that with the GMT machinery that do yeah. not exist with the yeah. raw machinery. That's I, exactly. that I still remember. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, what I have to do there is to carry through the same calls, I guess, so that they all call the same, same functions. So I just have to remind myself what happened there because I don't quite remember why, but uh, it should be possible to at least figure out why yeah, it's not. Family, is there, there, there is a part of the code I don't remember in GMT map or something. I don't know. Yeah. There are yeah. families, families of projections that use the same functions to create the bits of the frame that are put together to have yeah. the form that whatever they need to have. Yeah, yeah. And that's what does that's what ever works for cylindricals. Probably uh, the difference is not something we can distinguish yeah, yeah. by eye, but for the others that do not at all. Yeah. There are no, uh, I think there are no fancy. No, the marketer work is in fancy. Yes, yes. The fancy yeah. But yeah, but most of them will be non-fancy. It will just be plain, plain based. The other ones, the other ones yeah. will, oh, you have all the polars are fancy as well. Yeah, that's true. Okay. All right, we will look at that. That's, before I forget, um, I, I asked uh, Unavco a couple of questions because they had earlier on, they had you know suggested that this year maybe they would pay the instructors. So I, I reminded them that they had said that, you know, what's the deal there? And they haven't decided yet. They're going to talk about that internally. <laughs> and the other thing was, uh, you know, can the instructors get some sort of certificate that they participated in this event? Uh, and they said that's a good idea. So they're going to look into something like that. So uh, I'll let you know what happens with the, with the. <laughs> I don't know what instructor pay means. You know, <laughs> usually we go to. Usually they pay for us to fly to San, you know, San Diego and pay for the housing and food, and they're saving lots of money doing these online things. So they they could use that to incentivize you know volunteers spending time doing this stuff. So we'll see what they say. I, I think that would be a good good move for them to do, at least as long as things are online. All right. Uh, anyone have any other issue that they want to bring up? I don't like that. You got dark there. No, I'm like Marlon Brando in the movie. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's still light outside, but not much in. in oh, yeah, right. All right, so I my job is to find the histogram bug and all that stuff, and then we'll see if uh, we'll have a discussion, I guess, about a potential 6.2.1. At some point, we have to decide, you know, what's that bear? Oh, yeah, what's I, that bear? I, I, I agree that um, if uh, that uh, histogram thing is, well, I don't know how widespread it is because, it, or yeah. and which circumstances it shows up, because not all of them, otherwise, it, it would have been noticed. Yeah, the the failures. There's no failures on that. So, but I agree that one might yeah. be might trigger the need for, for yeah. not letting months leaving it existing for months. That that's the time we'll take for yeah other regular. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that's fine. So I'll look at that. Uh, or uh, Megan, do you have time to have a look at this today? Because the, the reason I'm asking is that I have. I have to put my chair hat on today and do some uh, urgent work <laughs> for the dean. Uh, so I can't immediately spend hours doing this today. Yeah, um, I have a, I have time for a, a couple hours until my next meeting, so I can work until then, and maybe you'll be free to take oh, yeah, over okay. if I don't finish it. Yeah, yeah. Then, so just I'll, in case, if, if, it's, yeah. if it's easy to see, you know, see what's going on, then that just saves little steps or two. But there must be something stupid, because all the... There's several tests plus examples that uses the histogram that did not fail, right? So there must be something subtle that uh, happens in this one. I don't know what that is yet. Yeah, I think it might be, my suspicion is that it might be something with falling on the boundaries based on just some like GRD math pipe to histogram tests that I ran, but I haven't looked into it in any detail. So I'll check that out. Yeah, it's if if that was the case, I think you would the area under the bars would add up to sort of the same, right? It looks like you're missing a whole lot of information, right? The histogram on the right does not have the same area as the one on the left, right? Yeah, so which is missing, I think what would happen. 
if right. PMT were to just ignore data that fall on the interval boundary. P T point one. Anyways, point. I can I, I'll take yeah, a look yeah. and, and that's a that. funny one. And I'm sure it's a stupid bug, but they're all stupid once you find them. <laughs> it's a problem. Okay. Um, that's all we got, I think, for this this Thursday. There will be uh, we'll set information about the UNAPCO workshop as we start to pin down specifics. Uh, we'll create the uh, GitHub repo for 2021 uh, and populate that with you know the homeworks and whatever we're going to do there. Use the last year as starting point, and then you all have access to the slides from previous years if you want to make changes. And we'll create the same thing there, I guess, a, a, a Google Docs folder for this year's uh, this year's workshop to put them in. OK. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could what? you please repeat it? What are you talking about, Siri? Sometimes Siri <laughs> thinks that I'm talking to her. It's very strange. Yes, she called, she called you, and she called a couple of others while I was laying down in the sofa. Yeah, I think she's lonely. If so I, I knew how to just rip it out of my mobile, stupid thing. It decides to call people. I think it puts her to good use and have her write all, rewrite all those modules we need to get, get done. Oh, yeah, that would be helpful. You know, do something. Yes, yes. <laughs> Instead of, well, do something useful. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, this is, it happens several times where some phrase gets close enough to, hey, Siri, I guess. Oh, careful. Uh, and it picks it up. It, it didn't pick that one up. <laughs> so who knows what it was? But I, I don't think I said said that magic phrase. All right. Anyway, on that happy note, uh, take care of yourself, and we'll see you on GitHub uh, shortly. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everybody.